And welcome to the first episode of the year 2021 of Rushed Vibes. I am Miss Rush Vibes herself, Jessica Rush Vibes Rushing. And with me, my co host, co captain, partner in time, partner in life. That dude, father of my children, both of them, Mr. David, Rush Vibes, rushing. Pew, pew, pew. Thank you for a worthy introduction. You are most welcome. I appreciate it. Feels good to be here. It does. 2021. We made it. We're here. We're alive, unscathed. Look, Ma, we made it. I would say we made it with flying colors, but I don't know that that would be true. I think we're definitely scathed. I think unscathed unscathed was was a little generous, generous, Um, bruised, battle tested. Got got a few scars, but we've we've we're still in the war. We haven't won the war yet. Yeah, we don't know when the war's going to be over. We're still in it, fighting battle after battle, and we. Are here here we are here we are so uh quick shout out to our new subscribers on youtube hi friends assuming it's not our circle of, of friends and family then in that I, case I hi some, family i did see some new subscribers coming through who who i, Wait, I was unfamiliar okay with. pause so he looked at one of the ip addresses and it said that we had someone in Japan, Ireland, Canada, and Djibouti. Djibouti. And this man lost his mind. He was like, Jess, Djibouti. And I was like, I was like, we have a listener in Djibouti. (laughs) I was like, bruh, it's it's just Djibouti. No, no, it's not just Djibouti. It's Djibouti. So to our one <laughs> one audience member one listener in, in Djibouti, Djibouti, we appreciate you. Um, and David was very you. excited about you. Um, same for our one listener in Japan, in Ireland, and our one listener in Canada. We greatly appreciate you. So that means Rush Vibes is officially we international worldwide people. Look out. We, we coming, coming for you. For Mr. You. and Mrs. Worldwide. Queen City. Mr. and Mrs. 704. Dale. I don't even know what that means because I don't speak Spanish. But I just know he says that on all of his records. Dale is. Is what? It's like, come on. Oh. Well, come on then. <laughs> Dale. <laughs> Okay, so yeah, I needed to sprinkle in that Djibouti fact. He was very excited about that. Um, But it is 2021. We made it. I'm excited to be here. Uh, I still have moments where I look back, even today, where I was just like, wow, it is a whole new year. Like, we we went through an entire year. I don't know where 2020, like, I don't really know what 2020 is. Um, And I saw a meme the other day, and... I, I, it's probably from one of those sci-fi movies that I've never seen before, but in the first picture, it was this guy saying, I'm going to take away a year from my life, from your life. And then the second picture, it said, please let it be 2020. And I resonated with that meme because 2020 was just taken away from us. I feel like we can go back to every single year and like, this this is what we took away from it. And 2020 was like, nah, bruh, this is what I'm taking from you. 2020 came with a vengeance. So um, I'm very happy to be here. And I felt that our last podcast, which was supposed to be, you know, uplifting vibes for going into 2021. And we talked about how, you know, people are nasty going out with colds and the flu in the past. And now COVID has taught us to be slightly more hygienic and um, to wash our hands. If you haven't seen it already, our um, 
four-year-old at the time, she recorded a hand-washing tutorial. So um, she was very thorough, and she taught people how to get in between the germs. Um, so I highly recommend going to watch that. But um, she doesn't like washing her hands anymore. So anyway, but I wanted to talk. So before you do that, um, because I was I was in the middle of something before you cut me off and told the story about how I was excited about Djibouti. Oh, Djibouti, my bad. yeah. You Tell know. your just story. Yeah, don't, don't do that. Uh, what are you drinking? I in your so interesting looking. Okay, so cup this is a tiki. That. This is a tiki mug, um, and I've had it for about four years now. I got it when I was working with Diageo, and I've never used it. So you know, it's New Year, same me, but cleaning out the <laughs> cleaning out the house, and I decided to start in the kitchen. So you know, small projects. And I actually got all the kitchen done, so I'm very proud of myself. Um, so I decided to use this mug. So it's pretty much just a jazzed up screwdriver. So I've got Trader Joe's mango peach course, orange Trader juice, um, some peach schnapps, and some gray goose because goose gets you loose. You remember that? No, remember I that when that was trending. I'm pure. And then everybody went to Moscato. Mm-hmm. No, it's rose. Rose. What, what do you heathens drink? I'm unaware. I'm as, un- you drink, as you drink straight bullet. Yeah. Bullet bourbon. Meat. My, my bullet bourbon. Meat. Gentleman's drink. Oh, we're supposed to do that. Oh, are we? Why do you always have to put... A straw? Because I'm a lady. And also, because since this is the first recording of the year, I put on a little makeup. And some earrings, but you can't see it because I'm wearing headphones. You but, look good. You know, I got I put my lips on. You look good. Um, put some foundation on. But I will say I'm rocking. I'm rocking the um, the 2020 COVID mullet because I'm business at the oh. top. <laughs> <laughs> business up top, and- but I'm really personal <laughs> at the bottom. Uh, I got pants on, but like, no, I got shorts on, but they're like barely shorts. So I, I'm gonna I'm gonna coin that term. So I've got trigger song, and then I've just got like the the physical mullet where sure. I'm just business so up top. You're gonna you're gonna drive a lot of this uh, episode. I am. <clears throat> Excuse me, but uh, before you do, um, I just want to slide my mic as I did last episode because this is the second episode for YouTube. Shout out to YouTube. You tizzle. Uh, this obviously says Black Lives Matter, and I know that's not an unfamiliar term. We're all pretty much initiated uh, with it, but. In this case you forgot, is actually a mural that was painted on one of the streets in Uptown. So this is a this is a print of that of said mural, uh, Tryon Street, right? Tryon Street in Uptown. It was closed for a few months, and mm-hmm. they they eventually opened it back up because businesses were complaining. But um, I went ahead and bought a shirt because and Jessica and I have gone to this mural probably like a handful of times, um, and it's beautiful. Uh, at, when they first closed the street off, um, there were a lot of billboard. There were a lot of uh, Board, a lot of the businesses were boarded up, so artists came out and, and did some graffiti, and it was, or did some murals, excuse me, and it was it was really, really inspiring. It was really great, and it was it was nice to have, um, that street blocked off because it, it kind of gave me vibes of Denver, how they have the 16th Street. For any of you who oh, yeah. are familiar with Denver uh, downtown, or for the, me, for those of you who are unfamiliar with it, they have an entire street. I think it's like two miles or something like that, at least uh, forgive me locals if I'm, if I'm botching this, but we went out there for our first wedding anniversary and we walked and they've got shops and retail and, and people just kind of strolling or sitting or doing whatever. So it kind of gave me vibes with that. Obviously not as long, but um, really proud of, of our hometown to uh, have commissioned artists to, to put this mural on the street and then also to block it off and kind of pay it its respects and pay the artists their respects to kind of allowing it to be on display for for so long so just wanted to give a quick shout out in case anybody saw my shirt and was like oh man that's pretty dope if i can remember uh, i can't remember what organization i bought it from but it basically all the proceeds went to charity so if i can if i can find it i'll put that in the description down below and i'll put it on our show notes as well i don't know if they're still making them so if not then my bad but um it's a pretty dope shirt. Also, before we get in to uh, whatever Jessica wants to talk about, because we don't, she wouldn't tell me, I asked her, and she was let like, "Let me do the bit." She was like, "Let me do the bit," because we're recording this on January third, 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 twenty twenty one. 
uh, a lot of news. The big headline of the day is our president uh, reached out to the Georgia Secretary of State and some other elected officials in Georgia and was basically trying to get them to uh, say the election is wrong. Overturn, <laughs> overturn the uh, outcome in, in Georgia. He was quoted as of saying, I just need 11,000 votes, fellas, among uh, regurgitating a lot of uh, debunked conspiracy theories and, and, and whatnot. Um, so there's that. <laughs> I mean, if he needs eleven thousand, he just needs to go get it. Like there's um there's there's that, and then there's also a slow coup moving within our um, chambers of Congress. We've got some Republicans who are trying to contest <clears throat> the election the or the, the electors. So uh, all that's going on in twenty twenty early Amidst early twenty twenty one. A pandemic with a new strain. Yeah. New st- that new new, co- new new year new COVID new year new COVID. So uh, I, I you know we talk about a lot of different things or we'll talk about a lot of different things. Um, politics is obviously one of them because we're in a country where we're politics American dominate. And we have the right yeah. to speak about politics. Yeah. So I I don't want to dominate this episode with with politics. that, but I just wanted to put that out there for anyone who maybe had been sleeping all day long. Um, and continuously sleeping and won't actually see this episode until Wednesday in case you, you weren't aware, but that's just wild. So I'm curious, just wild um, before me. we dig into uh, my, my bit, um, <laughs> I'm curious who recorded this conversation. Oh, he, um, uh, well, all, I think majority of the lines that the president uses are, are recorded, but if you listen to the audio, I think it's Mark Meadows, <clears throat> chief of staff. I was letting everyone know who was who was in the room and on the call, I believe. So, I mean, they knew it was being, everyone knew that the so call was being recorded. It? I don't know. It doesn't really matter. No, it doesn't. It's just, um, I, I honestly just. It's it's hard for me to believe the president of the United States didn't real, didn't know that his call was being recorded. Speaking to it's, it's elected just, officials it's just about hard for concerning me to, the election. To think he, he, it's hard for me to imagine he thought he could ask for 11,000 more votes. And well, I mean. Like, like where, where are they going to come from? I mean. We're just going to switch people's votes? Look, he's, well, this is the same man who people? said stop the count while votes were coming in on election day. So I'm not, I'm not surprised. It'll be interesting to see how all of this plays out. We've got a it's, lot of. But it's not going to play out. I mean, it, it just it it'll be interesting to see what happens. He's got 17 days left, essentially, until January 20th. So we'll we'll be sure to keep an eye on that, and and I imagine it'll be a reoccurring uh, topic here on on Rush Vibes. But but I will let you get into your bit. So um, 2020, we survived, um, and. You know, we lost a lot in 2020. We gained a lot in 2020. um, And we had to figure out a lot. So I've just kind of been doing a lot of reflecting. And I remember either last episode or second to last episode, you were talking about how you started, you know, using a calendar before we even got into the new year Mm -hmm. and, you know, trying to build good habits. Mm -hmm. And I was thinking, okay. I, I've been also doing the same. I've been using my planner and trying to be regular about, you know, writing things down and, and just journaling. And as you know, and mm-hmm. as a lot of people in my, my close circle know, um, I've been really big about self-development and mental health. Like I'm all about it. Um, I did have a brief moment where I was like, I'm going to go back to school and become a psychiatrist um, or a therapist. And David was like, no, um, <laughs> flat out. Just no, no support there. Um, uh, I also said I was going to go back and be a lawyer. And he said, no. So uh, because this is being presented without any sort of context whatsoever. <laughs> my husband doesn't support my dream. I was the reason why is I did not say no as in no, that's not for you. I said no as in now is not a good time. No, uh, that there was the master. There is a there is a window. Um that I think would be op- more optimal for mm-hmm. you to achieve these things. And that window is not currently opened. So so pivoting to my point, if 2020 has taught us anything, it's that we shouldn't assume that windows and timeframes are going to, to come when we 
That's fair. want them to. Um, Absolutely fair. Because life just doesn't work like that. Life, the the schedule that we create for life does not work like that. Sure. I tell people all the time, you know, we have two kids, neither of which were planned. And if it had been up to us, I don't know at this point if we ever would have gotten to a point where we would have said right now is the perfect time to have kids. Yeah. Some people have that privilege. Uh, our fortune doesn't work like that. I, I think life kind of just tells us that if you want to do it, you have to do it now. So this seems minuscule in the grand scheme of things. So I've worked in liquor, um, beer and wine for many years. And over the years I've accumulated miscellaneous bottles of, of vodkas, just every, every kind of spirit you can imagine. And a few of them I've kept unopened because in my mind, I'm waiting, and this might be the Ghanaian in me. Um, I'm waiting for. Shout out to Ghana. Whoop, whoop. Um, I'm waiting for that perfect moment. West Africa's to, finest. <laughs> to enjoy this, this product. So when I. Year of the return, we missed out. We did. When I was working for. But we'll be there for. Oh my God. Beyond the let return. Me, let me do the bit. Okay. So you're taking, you're taking a while to get into I am. a bit. I'm just saying. So I was, I got a bottle of La Marca. It's a Prosecco. It's not even that fancy. It's like 15 bucks, but I got it when I, op when I was the grand opening coordinator for a particular brand, um, grocery, grocery chain out of North Carolina. And I said, I hated the job. I hated the people. Um, I strongly disliked the people I worked with cause they, they tried to stunt on my gangster and you don't do that. Um, so I, I still have that bottle and I got that bottle of Prosecco in 2017 and I told myself, I'm not going to open this bottle until I get my, my, my job, the job that makes me like the job that makes me delete Glassdoor, Indeed, LinkedIn, everything from my phone, the job that makes Oof. me not search anymore in can't my free time. You, I can't wait for you to find that job. Um, I can't wait for me I to swear, find every time I'm trying to talk to Jessica and I look over on her phone, I'm she's on, just going. I'm on Indeed. I'm scrolling. I'm Indeed, scrolling. I'm scrolling. Glassdoor, um, LinkedIn jobs. So I, I've kept this bottle of wine. It's in our kitchen. It's on top of our cabinet. I won't, I won't touch this Prosecco. I will go to Trader Joe's and buy a cheap bottle of Prosecco if I need something. I can want a mimosa and I will not touch this bottle. And I also have, I have several bottles of gray goose that I have refused to open um, because it was, it's, it's on my vision board that I will eventually work for Bacardi. And so I, I kept, I've had those since 2017. Bacardi, if you're listening. Uh, I've had those since 2017 and I actually, in this drink, I have, I opened up one of the bottles of great goose yesterday, that drink right, there. That drink right here, right okay. hizzle, right, okay. right in the his house. Um, cause you pointed at it like there was another drink for you on this table. So I, I, I mean, wasn't sure there, if, there is a shelf underneath here. <laughs> like That's cookie. where we pulled the, the, the like twisted the twist tea from tea. last yeah, time. It might, it might pop yeah. up. So I guess, so I finally opened up that bottle of great goose because reflecting on 2020 and I, I know Grey Goose is not like a stunt in vodka. It's not the vodka. Uh, it, it was just symbolic for me. Um, but reflecting on 2020, I realized, you know, for three years I've kept this bottle waiting for the perfect moment to open it, waiting for a celebratory moment to open it. Now, I'm not saying that, you know, if you have something for a special occasion, don't keep it. But for me... I realized that I had idolized these bottles and used them as until I get to a certain place, I'm not worth enjoying these and reflect like going back to my thoughts on 2020 and you know how things are just not guaranteed. It just dawned on me like, yo, why? Like why? Why am I doing this? Why? Like, it's a new year. Um, it's the same me. But <laughs> why had I put so much pressure on myself to not indulge, I guess is the best word to use, on these and to look at these on a regular basis is to constantly remind myself what I quote unquote haven't achieved when 
I have achieved so much. I do have so many things to celebrate. I am healthy. I have a husband. I have children. I have a home. I have all of these great things. And I spend so much time dwelling on what I don't have. Mm -hmm. And because I'm focusing on what I don't have, mm -hmm. I'm not appreciating what I do have. So wow. I... I <laughs> What? Wow. <laughs> so I finally said, you know what? <laughs> Put your tamarind down. <laughs> that was my Lauren Hill yeah. from, uh, <laughs> from uh, Lauren Hill gift. Oh, what's that movie? Oh, uh, with Whoopi. Whatever. Uh, Sister Act 2. Yeah. Um, so I, I opened it and I am consuming it. And I, I yeah. guess I kind of wanted to know if there's anything you have denied yourself or been denied. What? If I've been denied anything, you ain't that been I'm denied <laughs> nothing. Okay, so you can lift your get put get the bass out your voice. Um, that you have denied you yourself. Have me. Oh my god! <laughs> Let me do the bit, bro. This is like a fifteen minute bit. I well, you keep it. interrupting me. It's hard to do a bit if if the bitty keeps <laughs> interrupting so so yeah i guess i wanted to chat about that with you like have you in the past ever had moments where you have denied yourself something and then thought you know what bump that i deserve it um i won't say there are things that i've denied myself uh but there are things that i have definitely put off thinking that i've got time or now's not the right time or I don't have enough time right now. So there's, there's things that, yeah, I've definitely put off thinking that, you know, I'm, you know, I've got, I'm, I'm 20 something or I'm 30 something and I've got all the time in the world because I'm, I'm healthy. I'm, you know, I've, I've, I'm, I've got a good career, professional career going, you know, there, there are things that I can do down the road, down the line, uh, when it's more convenient or more comfortable for me to do. And I think, you know, if you, if you, if you outside of 2020, if you think back throughout your life uh, and you've either experienced this personally or, you know, been associated with someone who's lost somebody, right. Be it tragically or, you know, less tragic, but obviously it's tragic when you lose someone and it changes their, their perspective on life. Usually um, almost immediately. It's like, Oh, like when someone dies, what do you normally see on someone post on social media? Oh, hug your loved ones, like tell them you love them. Um, and it puts things in perspective for them. So they're like, oh, you know, don't wait another moment to tell somebody you love them or don't wait to, to do this because you never know. Like you step off that curb or, you know, you could be wrong place, wrong time. Anything can happen. So think of having 365 days of that. <laughs> like... Well, pandemic, um, celebrity titans have, have, have passed mm -hmm. so many, you know, through, uh, at this point, 360 some odd thousand Americans have, have died because of, uh, an invisible enemy of, of, of a virus. So that has kind of, not even kind of, it's, it's definitely, uh, lit a fire underneath me. And obviously that's, you know, as we've said in our, in our intro, intro episode here on YouTube and, 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 and on all audio versions of our podcast, you know, that's what's has spurred us to, to get up and, and finally do this podcast. Uh, and that's, it's, it's changed my focus in, in other ways too, professionally, um, things that I, that I've because I'm the one who handles the money in our family. I'm budgeting for our family, like goals and things like that. Like it's just 2020 was, it, it put a lot of things in perspective and, you know, we've, we've come through it relatively unscathed. Honestly, you know, our daughter was born in 2020 before, you know, the, a lot of the restrictions got put on hospitals. I was able to be there. Mom was able to come in. Our doula. Uh, our doula was there. Whew. Get yourself a doula. Uh, <laughs> get yourself a doula. Doulas, we will, I will make sure we lives. tag her in the show notes. We'll take fifteen percent of proceeds. No, we won't. No, we won't. Um, no. But so I, if you are a a woman, especially a black woman, yeah. get yourself a doula. Doulas are are, are clutch for Continue. real, and I say that as as a husband. They're they're great support systems for husbands as well, especially first time uh, dads. Um, 
our God, you know, our, our, our youngest is God mother was able to come and visit. So, um, you know, in, in our, our parent, my parents, fine. My brother and sister were able to move down and, and, and our nephews, um, your parents have been fine. Your brother, um, <laughs> relatively fine. I mean, his, his that's, problems have, he's, he's had a couple of, of, that, of scares, another, but that's, that's not COVID. That's not COVID related. We were able to have your, your two cousins, uh, Loretta and Georgia boo. come down. And Georgia passed the New York bar. Yeah, so we she got a is cousin. our lawyer. She she's is our, retained. Um, although she's our Esquire. No, 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 no. Kill that. So. Georgia has some feedback for me. And I'm sorry, America. I'm, I'm going to get through my point and then this we're going to take a break. Uh, I had took, she took issue with something I said because she's a lawyer now. Esquire. Esquire, excuse Esquire. me, that I said on one of our prior podcasts. And she referred to, Je- she was talking about me to Jessica in her text and referred to me as Mr. David. Yes. I was like, wait was, a minute. She was in Esquire nah. mode. She was in professional nah. mode. She nah. takes her business seriously. Ma'am. Okay. Ma'am. I'm speaking. Do I need to call my lawyer? <laughs> I'm Madam Co-Producer. My, I'm speaking. My lawyer. Listen, Georgia. Don't come from my lawyer. You know you love her. <laughs> All that being true, put that aside for a minute. I am not Mr. David. I am. You are. Almighty merciful. You- <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Cousin, cousin-in-law David. So she became a lawyer. Loretta got her yeah. master's degree. Like. And they came down so, and surprised but, me. And it was amazing. Yeah, it's not about you. My so, husband coordinated that. The same guy that who just a, said it's not about me. Yeah. Give me props, but no, it's not about take, you. I'm take, take them so, back. Uh, real quick. So, yeah, all that to say that we had a really good year, but nonetheless, there was still just a lot of agony and loss and pain out there. So, it yeah, it's definitely changed my mindset. And if there are things that interest me, if there are things that that peak peak my interest, things that. Um, uh, they, they, spark they have joy. spark joy or have my curiosity. I'm now going after them. So I'm learning, teaching myself all different sorts of skills and just getting serious about certain things so that we can put ourselves in a position to live the best life uh, possible. So 2020 has been the best teacher in, in that sense, because it's taught me uh, not to wait another day, um, do what you can get the most out of every single day that you can. Um, and you know, if you rest your head on your pillow, knowing that you've done that, you know, what comes tomorrow, I think it makes it a little easier to live with. Although if you die the next day, then you're just dead. So, <laughs> but that was a very sour end to what was almost like a motivational awkward turtle. Yeah. Um, but, but nonetheless, I, I put my, my all into every single day and, and, you know, I just let the chips fall where they made that rhymed. On that note, we're going to take a quick break and then we'll be right back. Before you say it, we do not have any sponsors. Okay, we'll be right back. Thank you for our sponsors um, who don't exist yet. Our sponsors, dead air. This is is your opportunity to jump in on Rushed Vibes and be part of Ground the, floor. the Vibe Tribe. Ground floor. Be able to say you were in it. Ground floor opportunity. And you, you know, speaking of ground it. floor, before we get back into um, whatever we're talking about, talking about ground floor, I don't know if you've ever been a part of something like at the beginning and being able to cultivate, like craft it and mold it and cultivate it. But man, that is something, it's just an incredible feeling. I, three years ago, was a part of uh, a new, uh, reimagination of an existing department within the company I was working for at the time. And I was hire number three for that, for that department at at my position. And it was, it was the first time it was really what kind of set me on the trajectory I'm on now in my professional career. And that I was really actually, I had an opportunity to give real input and my opinions and ideas kind of went into making the department and our operations and our standard operating procedures, like what they were. And it was just an incredible, incredible thing. And you can really like look back on things, whether you're there or not, obviously, because I've, I've moved on since, but look back and just be proud of what you have accomplished. And I just think that, um, that's also something that has motivated me to start a podcast, start a, um, 
start a production company, which we technically do have, uh, <laughs> to start other other business ventures because you know whether it you know, whether it becomes the biggest thing since sliced bread or not, you know when it when you you know put sweat equity and and, and blood, sweat and tears into something, and then you're able to grow it, and you've you've, you've seen it throughout the growing pains of, of being brand new and kind of getting it to where it's sustained and then ascending and, and growing. It's like, man, you know, this is something you, when you talk about legacy, right? Uh, what you, you is had, a legacy? That's something that you and I have talked about personally in, in the past. That's, to me, that's, you know, legacy, being able to take something and, and, and imagine it in your mind and then, and then take the steps to put it, thoughts into action and then create things and then share it with the world. If it's meant to be shared with the world or, or to bring other people in to get mm-hmm. them to buy into the vision and then, you know, you have something. So, uh, that's, that's what I'm, that's my mindset 2021 and beyond new year, new me mindset. New me. No mindset? matter. No, I'm saying new year, new me, new minds, comma, new mindset. Uh, no matter what this. So you're a different person than you are in 2020. You are Absol- in, absolutely. So your name is not David. By Russian. the time we get to the end of. <laughs> okay. Yeah. By the time we get to the end of 2021, I will definitely be a different person than I was. No, you will be an evolved person. Or 2020. You well, will I'm be an evolved person. So uh, that's all I'm thinking about going forward is, is as, um, you know, someone who has a master's in business and administration and, that would give me two degrees now because I have an undergrad in English and communications. But he won't support bachelor's. me to go back to school. Talking about yet. the window. Look, I'm not even going to get into it because that's a whole nother ep- uh, podcast episode topic. But uh, as someone who has now uh, a foundational understanding of business, I, I'm looking to create and start and maybe even acquire like all sorts of stuff. Like I'm trying to be like the next, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. But <laughs> I'm bump, like bump trying to be the next, <laughs> I'm with the next bump trying to be the next. I'm trying to be the first David. And I'll put my whole government out there. David Andrews rushing, but you're a new person. So you need a new name. No, I, I don't. Yes, you do. No, because if you use because I'm not because when I say new me, I don't mean literally new me. And I feel like as that's what people uh, an adult mean. who's raising children and contributing to society, you should be able to understand. Not, that should be I'm understood. I'm not going to raise my kids to want to be a new person every year. I'm going to raise them. First of all, I'm going to raise we them. We are to going to raise them, evolve and grow and learn and take on new challenges, but. I'm going to raise them to like the people they are because they're great people. You, there's nothing. There's nothing that says you can't. I just like, don't like. I don't like nothing, the new me thing. I'm just. You're not a new person. I'm speaking. There's nothing that I'm says speaking. you can't. Well, I'm speaking right now, yeah, and then you can you speak. Interrupted me. That's not true. Let me do the bit. <laughs> Wrong. <sighs> Wrong. There's nothing that says you can't like who you are because you want to change certain aspects of you. I just think the terminology is incorrect. That's me personally. It's not incorrect. You're this incorrect. Is... <laughs> That's it. You're wrong. All right. I'm wrong. wrong. Um, speaking of sliced bread, um, I wanted about to, sliced bread? you said sliced bread. Did I say that before you the did? break or after the break? You said it like three minutes ago. Bullets hidden. I'm sorry. Speaking of sliced bread, I need to give a shout out to my mother of love, um, David's mom, because she got me a bread maker for Christmas. Probably the worst gift and best gift that she could have simultaneously gotten me. I've already made two loaves of bread back to back days, and I think I've eaten a majority of both of them. But they're little loaves. Um, And I, I just need to give credit to gift gifters. There are some people who literally have a gift of gifting. Um where they are just able to get the perfect gift for people. And it it just, it blows me away. They, they listen, they observe, or they just, you know, they just, they have the spirit. And 
I think two years ago, she got me an Instant Pot and David took a picture of me hugging the box um, because I was so, <laughs> so happy to get an Instant Pot. Um, and then this year, she got me a bread. Well, last year, she got me a bread maker. I'm going to so- tell you all right now, she had never <laughs> hugged me the way she hugged that Instant Pot. I was um, so offended. Maybe you'll, maybe we'll dig up the picture and and share it. But it was like mm-hmm. her her gifts are always spot on. The disrespect. Um, I, I don't know how she does it, but oh yeah, and she got just a bread maker. You know what I got? A Starbucks gift card. But you love Starbucks. It's <laughs> not the point. Didn't she give you life too? She should have got me a a, a little Neo espresso or whatever the things are An called. Espresso. Oh, they're not Neo's <laughs> No. <laughs> they're not like from the Matrix or whatever. No. It's Nespresso. Nespresso. I'm okay. pretty sure that's the George Clooney coffee. That's what he Oh, said. is it? Yeah. That's oh, the I definitely oh, I, I have to get one now. That's my um, guy. Um but yeah, no, so I, I love you, Mom. I'm, I'm so I'm so happy to have my bread maker um and have access to it. Bread was good too. Wasn't it? It was great. I forgot how growing up my parents had a bread maker and they were always making bread. So I love homemade bread. And she got me the cookbook and the bread maker. And, and we don't we don't have any like affiliate links or sponsorships or anything right now. But we'll definitely drop that bread maker link in the description. Yeah, as well, it's, it's it, compact. It's, it's not too big. I don't think it was too expensive either. And um, it, it's just it's super convenient. It's and fabulous. even even solace like she, and she's become super picky. She got down on the bread. So, you know, I just wanted to shout out because you said bread and I thought of the bread. Um, I didn't make That's any great. bread today. I'm, I'm thankful um, because I thought I was going to have a cupcake from our cake lady, Tasha. Uh, Tasha Brown uh, in Charlotte. She's the cake lady. Find her on Instagram. Get the strawberry shortcake. We will drop her information in the description and the show notes as well. Yes. She's amazing. Um, I already pre-ordered Sovereign's, wrong kid, Sovereign's first birthday cupcakes because they're that good. Um, But you also said legacy. You were talking about legacies. I also just noticed there's a tree behind me yeah i i meant to ask before we started filming uh we'll we'll be taking that down we're not living in the past here the christmas tree is still up they can't you didn't have to tell them if we make it (laughs) if we make it to valentine's day i'm going to the dollar store the tree is coming down decking that tree in it's it's a valentine's tree. the tree is coming down uh but this felt tree we're still the the set here at rushed vibes is still very much uh, evolving so uh, you you may see some things change. We may even change locations. I was talking with my cousin Mark. He was giving me some trying. He was dropping some gems and parting some knowledge. He's a podcast video podcast connoisseur. So he was you know giving us some tidbits for the for the uh, for the set. Uh, I think probably the most dramatic changes that we're gonna make would, would come with a new house. I don't know new house, but I would say the next. I don't know if we're going to do. New house. I think we'll do seasons here at Rush Five. So in season two, we'll probably have a different backdrop. But um, so a new house. the tree, the tree will be will be gone probably next episode. I'll put up a Valentine decoration. But I'll put up something Martin Luther King related. Um, but you said legacy, and while you were saying legacy, I was thinking how the creation of legacy is probably the closest you get to almost being godlike because you. On a very small, minimal scale, um, because you come up with a vision and then you execute said, said vision and you get to watch it come to life. And that's very much so. Okay, I see what you're saying. Are you Googling what I'm saying? No, but I, I, I didn't see where you were going with the godlike reference, but I see. Where you, did you I, think? I where did you? Cause I don't you got know. Real offended. Like, no, I wasn't offended. I was I was curious as to where you were going with it. Because you were you weren't letting me do the bit. I was letting you do the bit because I didn't say anything. Your face said everything. Okay. What'd you just Google? I just 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 keep going. Just, so anyway, just keep going. Um, just keep going, Justin. <laughs> <laughs> just just keep going. All right. That's, that's what um, our five year old does. When yeah. Whenever she's we, frustrated with us, as like, if just, because we're so annoying. Um, we have the nerve to frustrate her, a five-year-old. The audacity. Uh, so yeah, I, I, well, while you were saying that, I was I was connecting and thinking like that's so. Because even though you know you might have a kid, but that's still not really a creation process that's in your control. But when you decide that you are going to, like our for our example, create a podcast, 
you know, you have to put all of the work into building it Ooh. and then watching it come together. So yeah. there that that's that is on a very minimal level. Like evangelicals don't come for me. I'm not saying I'm not saying we're God. Like y'all calm down. Um Shame. All you theologians chill. Shame. Just just Shame. just chill. Um I'm just saying it's Blasphemy. it's a minimal reflection or a minimal opportunity to see what it's like to be a creator. Sure. To to take that responsibility on and to pour your heart into something. Well we're literally creators. Yeah. And honestly. you might get disappointed, yeah. but that comes with creation. That comes with, you know, creating something and letting it come to life. So I just thought that was interesting. We did have a uh, practice podcast um, about legacies. And when we replayed it, David realized that he's a bully. He's mean. <laughs> um, no, that is not. No, 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 no. He's very, he's mean. No. He's. Um, so if I may, because I feel like that's character assassination He's attempt He's so mean. what i what i realized was is when i get into a, a when convert, he disagrees with me passionately he when becomes i get me when i get into a conversation when i get really engaged in a dispute um i have no um filter i don't re i don't necessarily i'm not necessarily cognizant of who i'm speaking to i'm trying to construct my argument and then nail home my point so in the moment a very heated moment he was mean i forgot that i was speaking to my wife the mother of my children so it's not like i wasn't cursing and i wasn't like being like vulgar i was just being ve i was very vehemently disagreeing with the point jessica was making and i was very mean. strong about trying to make the point i was mean. making um but no it, I did actually let, play it back and I was like, wow, I need to, you know, this is obviously a podcast and we're going to have differing opinions, you know, here and there. And I know dispute is kind of what everyone kind of looks at content like this for. Uh, but at the same time, you're not just a counterpart. You're my, my actual, like you're my helpmate. You're my um, help me. Me, help me. Uh, my, sure, you my want to Google that? I don't know. My my better half is the bullet. The theologians can come after him <laughs> yeah, for come that. After, come after me, theologians. <laughs> You're my wife, you know, the mother of my children. So I, I obviously need to treat you with a, a, a baseline of respect, and that baseline is extremely high. So And I didn't meet it. So I did apologize. Um, and that's why we didn't run that episode. Yeah. It's <laughs> because... funny. We were, we were, I think, driving home from his parents' house, which is about an hour, um, yeah. and we were playing it. And I remember thinking, like, I know in the moment, I realized that he was being mean, but I don't. I, I think I'm so used to I'm so used to him being mean that I, I'm not mean. That I didn't I'm just mean. Very, very. I'm very direct. Can, but he can also be very condescending, and sometimes he doesn't realize that. Um, Wrong. So Wrong. I think I noticed it, but I didn't like take offense to it. But in while I was listening to it, I was like, "Wow, he, yeah, he's really mean." I was like, "He's a jerk." So then I was like, "I think I need to be mad at him." for how mean he was on this podcast so yeah, i was like was... trying to strum up like upsetness with you and as we were coming home he he was i think we were maybe like 10 minutes from home when the podcast ended he was like because i was like reflecting over it in my head and i was like wow this guy is just is really really mean to me he was mean to me um and there's a there's a video of Salas um, going at her grandmother, and um, she says, "You were being mean to me," and that's how I felt. I was like, "He was being mean to me," but um, the one thing that I appreciate about my husband, I, I'll say eight point five times out of ten, he is very good at reflecting and recognizing when you know he said something out of turn or he was just mean <laughs> or um when he was in the wrong or even if i was in the wrong but he recognizes that his response to my wrongness uh, was wrong he will come back and, and apologize and acknowledge it uh so some sometimes it's it's quickly sometimes it's not so because of that, sometimes I'm not quick to apologize because I'm like, oh, he's going to come back. He's going he's gonna to see that he was wrong in some way. 
I can be, it can be a hundred percent and 99.9% of the wrongness was me, but he'll recognize the 0.1% of wrongness, which was him. And he will apologize for that 0.1. And then I'm like, oh, okay, well, sorry too. But anyway, he was mean, but, um, that was such a while ago. I don't necessarily remember what we, how we, I actually, I do remember and I'm not going to bring it up because I, I don't, I don't we on camera now but um <laughs> legacies to me are very we weren't actually arguing about legacy we were arguing about i i said i made a comment that once barack obama was a once in a lifetime politician and you stated that you don't believe in the, the tagline or the the moniker once in a lifetime and it it kind of went from there it because went, it went, in, it in my mind far. Yeah, in my mind, it was it was minimizing how important Barack Wait, Obama. No, 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 let, me, let you do the bit. <laughs> I am speaking. Let you do the bit. In my mind, at the time, it was minimizing all of what Barack Obama, the person, the movement, the president, meant to the country at the time, and what ultimately it meant to to world history. Um, and I felt like you were saying, "Well, anybody could have done it," and it just it 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 struck me as very. Um, unappreciative uh, of what he meant just as a figure in American history. So I don't need you to try to try to try to defend your stance because we've been down that road and maybe we'll revisit it, but not, not on this one, but that's what we argue. We didn't actually argue about legacy. I think we, you know, it's kind of just an open topic and we mm-hmm. kind of, we kind of hit our, our thoughts and opinions on it back and forth. Yeah. So, but I do think that in this year, 2021, um, it is important to define, create, and execute a legacy for yourself. Um, again, I'm not team new me, new year, new me. Um, it's a shame. I appreciate who you are, unless so you're a I. serial killer <laughs> or a narcissist or a pedophile or all of those like negative things. But I encourage people to, you know, develop yourself mentally. Mental health is so, so, so important. Um, But I really do think that at a certain point in your life, it's important to figure out what your legacy, what you desire your legacy to be, what you desire to leave to your children, not necessarily in a monetary form, but in a, you know, reputation um, how people speak of you when you're not present, um, how people will remember you. It it might seem morbid, but like every once in a while, I think like if I died, like what, how would people remember me? And not in like a narcissistic sense, but in a, what impact am I having? And so I think, you know, we survived 2021, I mean, 2020, excuse me. And that is a miracle and a legacy within itself. But now that you've made it, what do you want said about you? Uh, when you think about all the people who unfortunately lost their lives to COVID and how people are remembering them, how do you want to be remembered and live your life in that way? Uh, and uh, this is not to be like motivational speaker. Uh, this is not. No, 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 no. You know, and I'm, I'm going to stop you because um, I'm, I'm, I'm reminded of this because he actually just subscribed to uh to our, our podcast but one of my old managers um one of the uh words of of wisdom he gave me um when i when i left the company was that he said i had a very bad habit of discrediting myself when i would speak like among the team on conference calls or whatever like i would say something and then i would basically say like oh, I know I'm not an expert in X, Y, Z, or I know I haven't been doing this as long as you guys or whatever. It, it would basically nullify. N- nullify my whatever point I was getting ready to make. So it was almost like I was self-sabotaging myself. So don't say like when you when you're speaking to other people, because you never know who's watching. Like we have viewers in Djibouti. Hello, Djibouti. In Ireland. Hello. In Ireland. Ireland. Um, <laughs> that was actually... Pretty that was pretty good, right? Yeah, don't sleep on your boy. And uh and Canada. Oh, in Canada. Oh. And uh <laughs> what? that was Midwest. That was that was like I North mean Canadian that's how Canadians speak. North Dakota. Okay, do Japan. Oh. 
Oh, shucks. <laughs> oh, shucks. Oh, oh, shucks. <laughs> um, and then we got people in Japan. I don't speak Japanese, so no disrespect. But I, I, pre- I appreciate y'all. Um, mushy, mushy. But you never know who's 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 watching and you never know who's listening. So and whether anyone's listening, it could be nobody listening. But don't ever. Like, don't 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 minimize whatever message you're trying to give. Just give it. And then whoever it 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 resonates with is who it resonates with. That's for them, the viewer, the listener to decide, to not not for you. So okay. I just wanted to, to no, say I that appreciate really quick. that. And it's funny you say <laughs> shout that. out to Eric Erickson. Uh, hey Eric, it's my guy. Because I I remember you coming. Best to manager me. I've ever had. I remember you coming far. to me and, and after that conversation, I was yeah. like, yeah, you you cancel yourself out. Yeah. Um, and it's funny and you say that. And that's the thing. I'm sorry, but that's the thing about a great manager is that. They can give, they can tell you about yourself, right? And they can. Without being mean. No, not even that. Well, I mean, he was just, he was just direct. He said, this is, this is something that you do. And this is something that I've identified um, as someone who is supposed to put you in a position where you can one, be be most effective for the company, but also, you know, in a best position to succeed. This is something that I've identified that you do. It's, it's holding you back essentially. Um, and he told me directly. He just said it. And the thing about a great manager is, is that they can speak to you directly and matter of factly. And you hit it. You it, it hit you, and it may hit you sideways, and you'd be like, "Oh, damn! Like I wasn't ready for that." But the trust has already been established. Mm-hmm. And you say, "Okay, well, if if my manager is telling me this, then and I trust this person to." you know, shape and mold me as a professional, but also put me in a position to succeed and be most impactful for the company, then I need to to heed this this advice and really do self reflection and really see how I can can get this bad habit out of me. So uh it's just a testament to him, the kind of manager he is, the kind of leader he is. I'm not just saying that because he subscribed, although I hope he hears it because, you know, I, I never um I never shy away from an opportunity just to say how much I, I appreciate him as a person, as a leader. But um, no, I mean, that's just a sign of, of a really good manager. And, th- and those are few and, and far between. They're yes. not, they're not easy to, I went, I was 20, how old was I? 30? Was it 30 before um, I was, I was placed on his, on his team. So I went 30 years or, or 30, I was 30 years old. Out. I went 12, 12 years of working experience before I found like, a, like the best manager I've ever had so far in my life. So um, they're, they're not, they don't come a dime a dozen. Mm-hmm. So I just wanted to. And that's honestly like uh, in, in my opinion, the signs of a true leader, because now you're essentially paying it forward to me. Um, and I appreciate that, which actually works towards one of my goals for the year. Um, as a woman, it's notorious for us to, get a compliment and cancel out that compliment. Um, I am queen, especially after sovereign was born and, you know, put on this, this, this baby weight. Um, anytime someone would compliment me, I, Oh, well, you know, I, I'm, I put on weight. I haven't lost this weight or this, that, like I, I, Oh, I don't have makeup on blah, blah, blah. And I was really, I, I went on a women's retreat back in November Um, and I was really convicted of that when I, like, while I was at the retreat and when I came home and that was something I said I was going to work on. Um, I don't know that I've been a hundred percent great at it, but I've tried to be better. Um, anytime someone would compliment me, I would, I would cancel it out and not because I didn't want the compliment, but just because it's in my nature. And I don't know if it was a, I don't think I'm worthy of this compliment or just, I, I'm too busy looking at the flaws within myself to see that someone else recognizes a compliment in me. You do it all the time. Like you'll compliment me. And I'm just like, nah, nah, son. Like he'd be like, Oh, you look good. And I'm like, I still got toothpaste on my face. I got spit up on my shirt. You know, I got like my braids and stuff like my edges just not done. Um, I'm just a mess. Sure. And you're still like, Oh, he like you look good today you look cute blah 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 actually you don't ever say cute but um I say cute. but um you yeah. looking good though i thought you were gonna do your little fine <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. um fine. And, and, and so that's something that i've had to struggle with i'm oh girl that's like the 90s no, and the 90s it. r&b don't dudes do oh girl 
So fine. Don't do it. Stop. So fine. Stop doing it. Stop doing it. This, yeah. This, this, <laughs> this thing you're doing. Stop. Yeah. This thing, this thing you're doing. Stop. Oh, man. Hey, um, hey, no, no, no. Before you, before you get too far, let's take a quick break, all right? You didn't let me do the bit. I know. But you finished the bit when we come back. So as I was saying, um, one of my my one of my convictions for the end of last year that I'm rolling into this year that I hope to roll into the remainder of my life and also input into my children, my daughters, um, is to receive compliments um, because it, it and it, it might sound corny, but I feel like a compliment is almost like a blessing that someone is is putting on you. I, 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 I don't think it's corny. Just okay. I thought you weren't you weren't following me. Nah, I but if someone, if you, you know, sometimes you you get dressed and you walk out, and someone is just like, "Oh my gosh, you look great!" Um, and you're just, like, I just, I just threw this on. I'm not, I'm not trying to look cute. This old thing. Uh, yeah, that th- this old thing, or Girl. oh, I just ran out of the house, and it's so natural for us to cancel out a blessing that someone is giving us. And I really want to be intentional about receiving that. Like it it might seem so small, like a compliment. Your hair looks good. Oh, I love your eye makeup. Oh, look at those shoes. Like whatever. Um, I just want to receive it. And I, and I don't know about white women, but I know black women are very big. Like, especially me, I probably annoy David all the time. Cause I'm like, yes, sis. And our compliments are so simple and, and one worded sometimes and sometimes it's just in the eyes especially with the mask now but it, it it's a lot so i i i encourage us as women all women of all creeds of all of all creation to receive whatever little blessing you get when someone compliments you don't cancel it out um and because you know i'm significantly heavier than I was after, you know, my firstborn was born. Um, and I'm still kind of struggling with my weight. And it's almost like anytime someone compliments my, my physique or my body or just my appearance, I'm like, no, because I'm not where I want to be, but that doesn't mean they don't see me and they don't see, how do I word it? How do I articulate that? What they're seeing in me is still great. Mm. Um, but because I'm not seeing that in me, I am not wanting to meet them there. So I guess I'm just trying to encourage people to, you know, in this year, receive that, that blessing, receive that compliment and just say, thank you. Like, don't, don't cancel it out. Say, thank you. You look nice today. Thank you. Like that. I think, I think, and I, I, I totally get everything that you just said and I, and I can, can identify with it. And I respect it. And I think I'm going to go out on a limb and, and say that I think it might be human nature to that most of we're all kind of our, our own worst critic, mm-hmm. right? And, you know, I've been in, in various creative spaces, right? Like there was a time where I was um, really heavy into photography, right? I got a new camera and I was snapping pictures and then I kind of narrowed Golden it. Golden hour. Golden hour, yes. Y'all. I heard and golden I hour it, so much. And I narrowed it down uh, to, to a bit of a niche in terms of like cigars and, and spirits, particularly whiskey and bourbon. And I would take pictures and I would put them on my, my, my Instagram and I would be like, mm, I don't know. I don't, I don't feel like that's not, it's not really hitting. Like I would look at other people and theirs would be like so fire to me. And I would look at mine and it just wasn't measuring up, but I would share it and I would get so many compliments and people would you know, put the little fire emoji and I would share it to like friends and family. Like, yo, this is like dope. Like, why aren't you doing more of this? And I'd be like, I mean, this was, this was all right. I mean, it was okay, but it's not like, like these people over here. And I think it's just because we put so much, you know, think about how many for someone who's a writer, like how many drafts of a published piece, you know, do they go through before they actually like, to hit the final submission to an editor, like um, how many times does a does an artist, you know, how many canvases do they do they go through, you know, when they're when they're creating a piece, or how many times do they have to stop and walk away and come mm-hmm. back? So I think, uh, and when we're, when we're speaking of ourselves as say a canvas or whatever, and in your in your example, you know, your your body, um, because you're not happy with where it is, 
and you you know that you're trying to get to a certain place because that's what you're you're waking up with and you're walking with and you're dealing with day in and day out when somebody comes in and they're like oh well you look great like yes you know the little hand y'all do like a hand y'all do like yes you're like like why would you say that because i'm i'm clearly not where i want to be and Mm -hmm. i think it's just human nature so i appreciate you saying like yes let's walk in um positive vibes and you have positive vibes uh, affirmate like when words of affirmation like when when someone goes out of their way to give you a compliment on no matter what it is whether it's you know your looks or you know what you know the work that you've done at, at, at work or whatever accept it hear it receive it walk in it because you're right it is a blessing because that person didn't have to say that Mm-mm. like i've worked for managers who didn't compliment me at all and it's it's up to you to be like your own encourager and um so yeah, I mean, I 100% agree. Definitely, uh, you know, be your in, instead of being your own worst critic, or along with being your own worst critic, be your be your biggest cheerleader. Yes, like take the the the, the compliments and, and and set goals, and as you're achieving, as you're checking off boxes, you know, on your way to to whatever your 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 ultimate goal is, like live in it mm-hmm. hype it up honestly be like be like a kid be like yo because i'm the shit when we say uh, it it's okay <laughs> when, you are okay when we come no nah, it's we're adults we're the adults. kids are asleep they're asleep <laughs> the worst things have been said like literally walk in and own that you are the shit it's 2021 Shizzle. 360 some odd people have thousand people have died. Mm-hmm. You are still here. Mm-hmm. You are still working toward whatever you're working toward. Yes. When you hit, I don't care if it's a small milestone. I don't care if it's a big milestone. When you hit it, celebrate it. With that bottle of Grey Goose. <laughs> Grey Goose, <laughs> bullet, whatever. And, and tell yourself, I'm the shit. If you don't cuss, say, I'm the stuff. I'm the stuff. The stiz up. The shizzle. For shizzle, dizzle. But because I, I think, I, <laughs> I, no, and, and, and this is the last point I'm going to make on this because I, I know I'm kind of robbing the, the, the I'm, I'm hijacking the, the segment here. Do the but bit. But I, I think, like for me, I know I was raised to be humble. Humble. Right. You don't want to, you don't want to be braggadocious. You know, we don't, mm. we don't do bravado. We don't do all that. But, just and while I think that that's important, um, I, I do think that at at a, at a bit of an expense, it, it has attributed to some of that self sabotage that I was talking about in the last segment. It's and we like, had conversations about that. Yeah, where it's I'm like, like, bruh, you be killing it, and you're like, nah, me. Yeah, yeah. No, no. And it, and, it, and it comes from, and I don't, I don't, I think it's just like I took the you know be humble and and be uh, the, the quiet confidence. I took that maybe too much to heart mm-hmm. and. When people would compliment me, I'd be like, oh, well, you know, thanks. But, you know, so-and-so did did something like when we were playing, when I was playing high school football, uh, our team sucked my sophomore, the junior year that I played. It was the first year I played football my junior year in high school. And we were playing, um, I think it was Charlotte Latin here in, in Charlotte. And we were getting smacked, like. <laughs> like they could have brought a, a peewee league, a peewee team out there and they would have drug us. Like we suck. But um it was like fourth quarter. I was playing against like the fifth string, like, you know, the seniors who were like the water, like the, the equipment oh. managers who they gave like <laughs> who just happened to have a <laughs> who uniform. they gave the spot because they have been they have been equipment managers for three years or four years. Like we were playing against them. You know, I came I was a receiver, so I came off the line. I gave dude a little uh and I caught like a, I think it was like a seventy yard touchdown. Okay. And um, it was my first touchdown ever. Did I didn't you do a dance. I never played. No, you can't do that in high school. They give you oh, like you a flag. Can't. Yeah. So I never played football until my junior year in high school. It was literally like a ninety three go route. I just ran and caught it off my helmet. Actually, it was like hit my face mask and I tucked it away. And then I ran. I was pretty fast. And I remember walking to the bus after the game, and my receiver coach was like, David. He said, really, hey, man, that was a really awesome catch. Like, that was that was great, man. That was good stuff. And I'm like, bro, we lost like 50 to, <laughs> 50 to 7. I said, 
I don't care about a touchdown that I score like my first touchdown. Like we got blown out. I would have rather the team won and I had no touchdowns. And well, I think that's that's a great mindset to have to be a team player. Like like in team sports, um, you need that attitude, and it, it's great if the majority of your team has that. I still made myself a major accomplishment uh, that I had achieved. I basically minimized, if not eliminated it, because I was being so humble in that I was like, oh, well, my accomplishments can't matter if the team Mm -hmm. didn't didn't share success. And while that's admirable, I don't know that that's necessarily healthy. Like you got to be able to to find your silver linings and you got to be able to find your victories in in any storm, because, um, like I said, that just kind of continually builds your confidence as someone who was a, a teenager at the time. So I can definitely identify with that. And even to this day, I struggle with it. Like my immediate response to any compliment, especially in the professional world, is like, oh, well, you know, thanks. But, you know, I was, you know, somebody else did something great and somebody else did something really good. And that kind of supplemented me doing whatever I did. And and sometimes it's just okay to like in your mind, like, but I'm the shit. Mm -hmm. Like, thank you. Like, I know, like everything you're saying, like, I, yes, yes, Bill. I did do a great job. I did that. I did that. I did the job. I put it down. So. Um, no, I, I like 1 million percent agree with you. And I think that, you know, on a personal level, I can stand to do more of that in, in 2021 and going forward, you can. And then if anybody else can identify with this, I think, you know, it's, you know, high time that, that, you know, you do the same thing as well. Absolutely. And I, I, I was, this is probably going to be a topic we'll have to elaborate on another episode, um, because it's a very fine line between crossing that humility and cockiness, um, and especially once you have kids and you're trying to instill that within them. So, you know, it's, it's something simple, like I'll compliment. I'm very big. We're very big on complimenting uh, our oldest. Uh, and once Savi gets old enough, she'll get them as well. But, you know, we'll regularly, like I'll tell Salas, you know, Oh, you're beautiful. Or you look great today. And, and today is actually the first day she gave me a different response, but normally she's like, I know. Or you're like, Oh, you're so smart. I know. And, I love it because she's just such a badass kid. She's like, and I feel like that sets her up that she won't be anticipating these compliments from the world because she, she already knows it within herself. But then in the back of my mind, I'm always like, this chick's going to end up real, (laughs) real cocky, like real cocky, confident where, you know, she, no one, and it could be a good thing where she doesn't need anything from anyone. But at the same time, sometimes she can come off as lacking humility Mm -hmm. because we are so big about letting her know that everything she needs is already within her. But today she came down and I think was it? No, yesterday you went to the dump and she came downstairs and she fell asleep in the dress. She, in the outfit she was wearing the night before the day before. So I just randomly said, I was like, you look beautiful today. And she was like, oh, but I'm wearing what I wore yesterday. And I had to like counteract and say, it doesn't matter what you're wearing. You look like you look beautiful. It doesn't matter that you wore it yesterday. Like you, you still look beautiful. So that was actually the first time she has that. I can recollect that she hit me with a a nullification of a compliment. Cause Salas is very much so like, you don't need to compliment me because I already know. Like I, yeah. I'm cute. I got this. I'm smart. I got this. Like you're intelligent. I know. So I think it's really important if we're trying to, ra- especially women. Um, I'm not a I'm not a boy mom, so I don't know. But especially raising young women, it's really really important for us to instill in them the knowledge that they are beautiful and they can accept that compliment and just say thank you um, or elaborate on what makes them beautiful, um, that they are brilliant and elaborate on that or just be thankful that someone else recognizes it as opposed to canceling it out. So um, that I think that's where I, you know, that's that's where, where I want to start this year at being receptive, um, not being so critical of myself. Um, and just accepting like, you know, this is, this is who I am. And though I'm, I'm hard, I I have certain expectations. Someone else is looking at me from a different perspective and recognizing that I'm putting out something or I'm giving something that is, that I'm not seeing. Like on top of that, 
you know, I've gotten a lot of compliments on my voice. So I'm really thinking about calling some 800 numbers and being like, hey, y'all hiring? Um, maybe I can, you know, that side hustle. Hey, how are you doing tonight? Anyways. You see, he sighs and shakes um, his head. But when those dollars start, when we making it rain in this kitchen. So I think that's a really good stopping point. <laughs> <laughs> Right about an hour and 10 minutes. So uh, one of these days we'll get no. an episode that's an hour or shorter. No. That's that's a target. That's a goal for has me. Has anyone complained to you about the lend? Uh, some people have, when we were sending out, we were kind our of trials. Our, our testing our, our, our some some of the early episodes we recorded for, for practice. I, I received some feedback that was like, you know, I kind of the sweet spot is like 45 to an hour. Um, and it, that doesn't mean you have to abide by every single piece of feedback that you get, but I, I would just kind of like to see it because I'm kind of looking at the data in terms of episode, the most listened to episodes or how long people listen before they kind of click out or hit pause and go on to do something else. So it would just be, it would be interesting to have from a, from a data set standpoint, just to kind of compare it against the other three, four episodes mm -hmm. that are an hour plus, but no, um, yeah, but this is this is exciting. Uh, every time we sit down to do one of these, I, I get more and more like excited that we have an opportunity to just sit down as a husband and wife, best friends, do something creative, and kind of share it with people who close to us, people who you know may discover us based on an algorithm or whatever. So uh, we definitely want to close out um, uh, on on the topic of feedback that we've been given. Um, it was brought to my attention that you know some people may be. Um, in the spirit of giving. So this is not something that is comfortable for me. I, I do not like doing this type of thing because I, I've been on Twitter and have seen people like, be like, Oh, I need, I need this and that and that. Here's my cash app. <laughs> so uh, I'm going to, I don't know where it's going to show up. So this is my first time doing this. We're still very new to YouTube, but I will flash our, um, our cash app sign. If you do feel like donating, I mean this, we're doing this, we're creating content. Hopefully we're providing some sense of value uh, to, to people who are watching. So um, that does come at a bit of a cost. So there are some things that we would like to do in terms of equipment upgrades. Um, technology is, is all the rage these days. So um, our, our, our cash app is <laughs> dollar sign rushed vibes without, without the apostrophe. Uh, we would love to, to, for you guys to connect with us on social media. We're on Instagram, Facebook and obviously here on YouTube, Facebook read rushed vibes, R U S H D apostrophe D V I B E S on Instagram or R U S H D V I B E S. And obviously you're watching us here on YouTube at rushed vibes. So uh, be sure to connect with us. Check us out at rushvibes.com If you have any topics that you'd like for us to discuss, or if you think of anyone, or if you know of anyone who you would like to hear us interview or give us uh, just some pointers on, um, really cool people uh, doing some really awesome things, whether here in Charlotte or wherever that would like to be a part of Rush Vibes, you know, be sure to drop that information there as well. Uh, episodes drop every Wednesday, so you can check us out on Apple, Spotify, Stitcher. I'll drop the links for Google. You can't, what's weird about Google is you can't search for Rush Vibes. It won't show up. But if, if I share a link to our podcast page on Google, which I could get through the RSS feed. This is tech mumbo jumbo. You can pull it up. So if Who I share that with somebody, at Google? Like, I have no idea. I have absolutely no idea why it, you can't just search for Rush Vibes. And has, you have to actually get a link to our page. So um, be sure to be sure to follow us on our social media because I share that link every time I, I post one of our new episodes. So you can find us there. But please feel free to donate. <laughs> look, I I'll give you my personal. Look, we're not we're not lacking for much here, uh, personally. You might but, not be, you know. If but I, I Next will say, episode we'll address that he has become the bank account Nazi, and he's I, I accounting say, for every penny spent. So help a sister out. <laughs> I will say that as someone who who uh, consumes. Um, content. Uh, and I, I'm very much of the YouTube university and, and find supporting individual creators. Um, I'm someone who has paid to access certain, uh, content from certain creators because it's, it's education knowledge that I want to attain that I don't want to go to say a, a university or whatever to, 
to pay that, you know, 10 times more to acquire the same information. So I, I, I do understand uh, and do appreciate that if someone has provided value to me, um, I, I do give mm -hmm. uh, and, and, and I am willing to pay for content. So if you feel like, you know, we've provided you some sense of value, um, <laughs> feel free to, to utilize the cash. If not, you know, we're still going to keep bringing you fire episodes every single Wednesday. So we're going to keep doing what we do, but we do appreciate everyone who's taking the time to listen and watch us. Uh, we, it, it means more than, than, you know. So with that, with that, I think it's time for us to take it home. So, uh, we love you guys. We appreciate you watching. Appreciate you listening. Check us out every Wednesday. Keep vibing. Happy 2021. I'm Dave. I'm Jess. Vibe Tribe. We'll catch you on the next one. We out. Stop me now. 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 Yeah, I can't wait too far to stop me now.